Have you ever heard of the Georgia Guidestones? Yeah, kind of interesting, huh? Oh, four little pieces of granite located in Georgia. Someone put up, but they didn't really want to leave their name. Who did it? The Georgia Guidestones. What do you know about them? Hmm, doesn't make it in your news every day. But here's like a monument. They call it the American Stonehenge. Yeah. So, what can we tell you about the Georgia Guidestones? Well, on one of the highest hilltops in Elbert County, Georgia, stands a huge granite monument engraved in eight different languages, don't you know? Hmm. On the four giant stones that support the common capstone are ten guides. I love this, or commandments. This is pretty good, okay? The monument that is alternately referred to as the Georgia Guidestones, or the American Stonehenge, okay? Though relatively unknown by most people, it's uh, an important link to the, uh, let's see, they got it as a cult hierarchy that dominates the world we live. Yeah, that, we'll, we'll let you figure that out, but I'll go over the ten things that are written on the Georgia Guidestones, okay? This is something you don't see every day, but let's go over number one. Once again, in eight languages, that's on the four stones, on two sides on each stone, you get, so we have a different language for every one. We have number one, maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance with nature. Now think about that, viewers and listeners. 500 million. Do any of you have any concept of what the Earth's population is today? I'm here to tell you it's more than 500 million. I think in China they got a billion or two. So my question to you viewers is, the people who met these stones up, these Georgia Guidestones, how are they going to get rid of the Oh, I don't know, six billion down on five hundred. How are they going to get rid of the five point five billion people, so that they can maintain humanity under five hundred million, in perpetual balance with nature? Boy, and these people could afford to have stones erected and carved and all. Yeah, so they get thoughts. Okay, hmm, who are these people? Okay, guide reproduction wisely. Well, geez, isn't that what eugenicists do? We're getting back to that Nazi thing, huh? Where you're not, you know, fit and healthy enough to breed? We don't want that breeding stock in, in our society. Think about what these people have written, okay? Because you might find out that they're the members of your societies that um, John Fitzgerald Kennedy warned you about. You know, these silly little secret societies and groups who feel that they should run your life, and they've got you believing that, you know, my doctor knows best, and, and my government knows best, and I don't know anything anymore. So maybe I should listen to these people and, what, get rid of, you know, four-fifths of the world's population. So anyway, let's see. Unite humanity with a living new language. Wow. We're going to, what, unify them? Are these one-world government type people? I've seen that with big globalist banksters. I don't know about you, but, yeah, one language, a new language. Rule passion, faith, tradition, and all things with tempered reason. Protect people and nations with fair laws and just courts. Yeah, fair laws and just courts. That sure does sound good, doesn't it? Huh? Hmm. Do you ever go to court against Monsanto? <laughs> Should I even go there? You know? Uh, oh, that's right. OJ and stuff. Yeah, fair courts. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's good thinking. Fair courts. Oh, and if you have the dream team of lawyers, you get off. That's because the court's fair. All right. Let all nations rule internally, resolving external disputes in a world court. Gee, you need kind of a world government to have a world court, don't you? Maybe these people want one world government. Just think if we had one world government and Hitler came to power. That'd be an interesting world, wouldn't it, people? How about Mao? He only killed 60 million. You know, Hitler couldn't hold a candle to him. Okay, but oh yeah, one world government with one leader. Yeah, what happens when you get a bad leader? Things get pretty bad, huh? Okay, um, ta -ta -ta. avoid petty laws and use useless officials. I kind of like that already. Avoid petty laws. So I'm going for one of the ten guides. Okay. Balance personal rights with social duties. Check that one out, people. Balance personal rights with social duties. What does that mean? Here in America, where we have a constitution that guarantees the rights of individuals, that won't work for the Guidestone people, will it? They want to balance personal rights. What does that mean? That means you've got to give up your... Hey, come on. Think about it. This is people selling you the collective. Yeah, the Borg is back. They're selling you the collective where your individual rights and you as an individual doesn't count. That what you should do is you should give and you should work and you should do everything for the collective. Well, I got news for you. History's tried that. 
So many times it's painful when you think about what happens when people start doing that. I think you're better off with people working for the individual. And you know what? If somebody wants to work overtime, that's fine. If somebody doesn't, that's fine. But telling him to work overtime because the collective needs him to, yeah, you might as well have slaves there, you know? No, anyway, the best cultures haven't been that way. So we'll see. But this is what your stone people want. Maybe they're masons. This is all about stones, you know. Hmm. Okay. Prize truth, beauty, love, seeking harmony with the infinite. Ooh, that's a pretty vague one. That's almost like together we can. Here in Massachusetts, we have a governor named Val Patrick. He rode into office with the sweetest thing, together we can. I think it ended up together we can build more casinos. That was his big push when he got in. So we'll find out anyway. Stay tuned, you Massachusetts viewers. All right, number 10, and this one I want you to listen to. This is Be Not a Cancer on the Earth. Leave room for nature, leave room for nature. So the first thing they want to do is pare the world's population down to 500 million, from 6 billion change, and not to be a cancer on the earth. How do these people think? Do they think bad of humanity, that we are a cancer? Have you been conditioned by the media that man is a cancer on the earth, that you're bad? You inherently are bad. You're a cancer on the earth.